Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to Miss Faika and all of my friends. My name is Nura Kumar Shafika binti Abdul Majid. So now, I will continue with the radiographic image evaluation of the oblique lumbar spine. So this is the anatomy of the oblique lumbar spine. And for the oblique projection, there will be the appearance of the Scotty dog on the radiograph. For AP oblique projection, the zygopoiesial joint are demonstrated with the least amount of magnification. You can see here. The zygopoiesial joint of interest are placed close to the IR, so it will demonstrate the downside joint. For PA oblique projection, the zygopoiesial joint are demonstrated with the greater amount of the magnification. You can see the zygopoiesial joint for PA are more magnified. And the zygopoiesial joint of the interest are placed far from the IR. So it will demonstrate the upside joint. For the true oblique lumbar spine projection, first, superior and inferior articular process are in profile. You can see here the superior articular process, inferior articular process, both are in profile. Next, zygopoiesial joint are demonstrated. Here, the zygopoiesial joint are demonstrated. 12 thoracic vertebra, 1st through 5th lumbar vertebra, 1st and 2nd sacral segment, and sacroiliac joint are included within the exposure field. If the patient was rotated less than 45 degree, the superior and inferior articular process, which is ear and front leg of the Scotty dog, in profile. The corresponding zygopoiesial joint is closed. We can see here the corresponding zygopoiesial joint is closed. The pedicle, which is eye of the Scotty dog, is situated close to the lateral vertebral body border. You can see here the pedicle. It is situated at the more to the lateral body of the vertebral body, and more of the lamina, which is body of the Scotty dog, is demonstrated. So to improve this, we need to increase the lumbar vertebra and thoracic rotation to 45 degree. Next, if the patient was rotated more than 45 degree, the superior and inferior articular process in profile, the corresponding zygopoiesial joint is closed, the pedicle are demonstrate close to the vertebral body midline. We can see here the pedicles is situated more at the midline of the vertebral body and less of the lamina is demonstrated. So to improve this, we need to decrease the lumbar vertebra and thoracic rotation to 45 degree. For projection, the for positioning, the positioning for this projection is correct. This is because each of five lumbar vertebra demonstrate a similar Scotty dog appearance stacked on top of one another. We can see here the five lumbar vertebra demonstrate similar of Scotty dog appearance. And then the zygopoiesial joint space are open here. The pedicles are seen halfway between the midpoint of the vertebral bodies and the lateral border of the vertebral bodies. Here. For alignment, the alignment between the X-ray tube and patient cannot be determined because there is no evidence of condemnation on all four borders of the film. The alignment between patient and cassette also cannot be determined because there is no evidence of condemnation on all four borders of the film. The alignment between patient and cassette is incorrect because the distance between central structure to the edge of the film at the left and right side are not equal. The centering point for this radiograph also cannot be determined because there is no evidence of collimation on all four bodies of the film. So the standard centering point for this radiograph should be at the lumbar tree at the level of the lower costal margin, lower costal margin, uh, 1 to 2 inch above the iliac crest and 2 inch medial to upside axis. For collimation, at the superior border, the structures that should be included are T12, vertebral body of L1 and L2, pedicle of L2.
at the inferior border. Structures that should be include are parse interarticularis of L3. Here, articular process of L4 and sacral segment. At the lateral border of the film, structures that should be include are transverse process here of L1 to L5, ileum and iliac crest. For the exposure factor, the contrast used is adequate. This is because the bony cortical outline of the thin structure, which is transverse process, can be seen. And the bony cortical outline of the thick structure, which is articular process, also can be seen. For density, use also adequate. This is because the bony trabecular pattern of the transverse process can be seen. And the bony trabecular pattern of the articular process also can be seen. So no change needed for the exposure factor. For markers. There is evidence of anatomical marker shown in the radiograph. It is correctly placed on the right side of the body and placed appropriately, not superimposed with any region of the interest. For aesthetic, the film size for this radiograph cannot be determined because it is obtained from the internet. So the standard film size for this radiograph should be 35 x 43 cm. And there is no evidence of artifact shown on the radiograph. For name, the patient's name and ID, date of examination, place of examination are not visualized on the radiograph. It should be placed at the appropriate area and not superimposed with any region of the interest. So for conclusion, the radiograph is unacceptable because there is no patient's name and ID shown on the radiograph. So this is my reference that I used to complete this task and thank you for watching.